Hey guys, it's Hyan here with Hobbies and Man once again, and today we are doing a like an overview or a review, I guess, of the first year of publication from Heroic Signatures uh, for the Conan license, right? So uh, I'm gonna go over some of the history about how this came about. I'm gonna talk about all of the releases that they've done so far in, in general. I'm gonna talk about some stuff that's upcoming here soon. Um, and that also relates to stuff that I'm doing, not just stuff that Heroic Signatures is doing. But then I will give you a summary for the whole series so far. And uh, also talk about um, what I want to see, you know, in the future, what things I think that they can do to um, like make their stewardship of the license, I guess is the right way to put it, better than it has been, right? And that's mostly things I want to see in terms of like storytelling or art or creators and stuff like that. Um, and at some point in this, I will also mention, um, what I thought was some of the issues that I had with the story and with the way that it's been handled so far. And we're gonna talk about it. I might be wrong about some of these things, so feel free to correct me down in the comments. Just don't be an ass about it, be nice about it. Um, and uh, depending on, on, on what the information is and how valuable it is to, to correcting something on my channel, I'll pin it or not. Um, I will you know reply to your comment regardless, right? So um, yeah, let's look at Heroic Signatures' as Conan. Uh, the first year in review, um, starting with the history, right? So as far as I know, um, based on watching different YouTube videos, hearing people talk about stuff in interviews and stuff, my understanding of the situation is as follows, right? So Marble reacquired the license after years of not having it, right? Because Dark Horse had it before Marble. And Marble decided to grab the license again they made a new ongoing series for Conan and did some crossovers with Conan with uh, the Marvel, um, you know, characters. Um, but mostly they were just interested in creating their omnibuses and their epic collection books for, uh, for, for their line, right? So it was mostly about getting the rights back to their old stuff and re-releasing it. And once they finished doing that, they kind of lost interest in, in the license, right? So, um, it was time to re-up it and they seem to have decided not to, right? And again, this is all kind of conjecture. It's not really exactly true. I don't know where to get those resources to where to ask that. Um, but based on all of my uh, knowledge and digging and stuff, I, I this is what I've come up with, right? Then there was this other company that was trying to get those those uh, th that license, but something happened to that company. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I think they imploded. Like they were trying to gather resources, gather money, and something happened and then they went down, right? And I think that company and a few others restructured into what we now know as heroic signatures, right? Again, this is not exactly uh, correct. I don't know if it's true or not, but this is kind of my understanding. And based on the heroic signatures website, that's kind of more or less what it seems to be. It seems to be like a company that kind of fell through and then re reestablished itself, reformed itself into heroic signatures. And they managed to uh, pick up the license uh, from Marble, right? So uh, once they got the license, they decided to partner with Titan Comics to print what they were gonna do, right? So when you think of the Conan comic book, the modern comic book, the uh, the one that started last year, you can kind of think of as Heroic Signatures being in charge of the material that is being made um, and then Titan being in charge of distributing it, right? So printing issues, quality control issues, issues with um, the paper and the stock and how the comic book is looking in terms of like um, um, like the physical aspect of it, that is all Titan's fault, right? Like that is what Titan is supposed to be doing. When it comes to the content, the, the material that is made, the material that is um, created, right? Like the stories and stuff like that, that's all from Heroic Signatures. So like Jim Sub doesn't work for Titan, he works for Heroic Signatures, right? So that's kind of the understanding there, right? And um, broadly speaking, I think that Heroic Signatures have done a, has done a really great job um, with picking different characters and different creators and stuff like that. And Titan has been okay at their job, right? Like when it comes to the main title, the Conan comic book, that has been more or less perfect. There has been almost no issues with it. I've noticed, I, I do remember Jim telling me uh, at Howard Days about a printing issue that happened where in one of the issues, I think it was uh, issue six or seven, um, there was a portion where the original print run just doesn't have text in a section that should have text. 
I mean, he mentioned it, but I, I, do, I don't really remember where it was. And I also don't think I noticed it initially, right? I don't remember mentioning it in my, uh, in my review of the series, right? So um, I would say that when it comes to the main storyline, when it comes to normal comic books, uh, Titan has done more or less a 9.5 out of 10, right? But when it comes to Savage Sword, which is slightly different from, from what they're used to, um, I would say that they've done like a 7 out of 10, right? Like they, they have shown improvement over time um, and it seems like they're trying their best, but they're not, you know, there yet. They're, there's still a lot of issues. I still have a lot of problems with how, how they they decided to use uh, newspaper or, you know, uh, you know, yeah, I guess newspaper print uh, stock instead of shiny paper and stuff like that. But that's uh, that's more of a me problem than a, you know, Conan fan base problem, right? I seem to be the only one that cares about that. Um, so that's kind of the history of of of, uh, of how Conan came to be, right? To 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 us now. In terms of releases, um, they did a free comic book day issue zero in 2023. They did 12 issues of the main run. Um, then they did free comic book day zero 2024, which is a the, the first issue in the uh, Robert E. Howard crossover event, which is called the Battle of the Blackstone. So this is. Um, the culmination of the first year of publishing, but also um, its own crossover event that's separate from the main storyline. And they brought back the Savage Sword of Conan, which is more or less their biggest success, I would say. I mean, the fact that the main series is insanely good, that has managed to bring people back to comic book stores and stuff like that, uh, is phenomenal, it's amazing. Um, but I think that there was a lot more hubbub and more ho uh, hullabaloo about the fact that Savage Sword came back, right? Um, and also, it seemed to kind of trigger a bunch of other, uh, you know, companies and, and groups to bring back those uh, anthology type stories, right? It seems like there has been a, a, a desire to return to that, but I noticed that there was a lot more of that after Savage Sword of Conan release, right? So um, I don't necessarily think it was thanks to them. I think it was just a general trend that was happening and Savage Sword just happened to, you know, come out before all the other ones. Um, but... Um, I think that is probably their biggest success. There are quite a few issues with it. Um, I still think they have a lot of room to improve, but it's not necessarily horrible, right? I think that if you buy the digital version, uh, you basically have no issues. It's just the print version that requires some work, right? They also made a new Hyborian map um, and they released it and it's uh, available for purchase directly from the uh, Heroic Signatures website. It's not that expensive actually, it's, it's pretty affordable and it seems to be quite big. So I will probably get my hands on one at some point, but I think that there's an issue there where it's only available in England and the US and that seems to be pretty bad, right? Like that is uh, difficult to understand because the Conan readership is not just the US and, and England, right? It, it is everywhere, right? Uh, I know that some people from Spain want the, the the map but can't get it. So I think that there are some issues with that. They should make it so it's available broader, uh, you know, in, in broader locations. And I think the way to do that would be to not limit it to their website, to make it available on other platforms, right? But that way they would have to share the profits. So I don't think that they, they really want to do that, right? They also re-released the Conan movies uh, through a a special edition that is like a box set of both and it had some extra stuff to it, which is cool. Um, then they reprinted the novelization, which looks great. Actually, I saw it in person and it looks really, really nice. I think they did this through Titan again, uh, which is great because Titan is actually pretty good at printing uh, and making physical volumes uh, of, of, of novels and books, right? So um, that is pretty great. I, I've seen it uh, in stores. I've not bought it because I didn't really feel like it at the time, but I have thought about getting it, right? So. Yeah, and then they started a new line of pastiche stories called the Savage Tales or the Heroic Tales. It's actually kind of unclear what the name is, and there's quite a few issues with the way that they've handled that because on Amazon, uh, you know, these series, you know, books that are in a series are supposed to line up together and create this profile on Amazon, right? But uh, there's been some issues with distribution and the way that they've handled that. So behind the scenes, uh, it seems like there's some problems because when you uh, go on to Amazon and you search her uh, legends uh, or whatever the, the title of the series is, um, you get like a bunch of them that are uh, kind of floating solo. And then you get uh, the first seven that are all together in a series, right? 
Um, and uh, that's an oversight that needs to be corrected. That is a problem. I, I don't like it because it makes it harder for me to be able to organize my Kindle store or my Kindle app, right? My Kindle library. Um, and also it's just annoying because I, I should be able to just land on that page and buy everything that I need from there. And I can't because they're not doing their, their job correctly, right? There's also some issues where I noticed that I bought some of them and uh, it registers as me having bought a, a, a different edition or a different version of the book, even though it's exactly the same. So that's another issue that they have to fix. I could contact Amazon about it and ask them, you know, what is this? But I don't think it's Amazon's fault. I think it's the way that um, the publishers have set up the, 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 the website, right? Or set up their settings for how they release their books, right? So there needs to be some issues there, some, uh, problem fixing there, but it's not that big of an issue. I've not really seen anyone really talk about these. I just know that they exist and they are still publishing them. And I think they have about uh, 12 of them out already, but there's another six or seven that are coming out by the end of the year. Um, I am not sure how often they release, I can't remember, but one of them is um, John C. Hawking's um, Black Starlight, which is a, a story that goes in between the Emerald Lotus and the City of the Dead, right? So um, they did that, the New Pastiches, the Savage Tales. They also released some actual novels. So they have the omnibus collection of John C. Hawking stories, right? But it's only the two main novels. And we also have MC Starling's book. And I think this is the first book that they released. Um, they also released a monolith based RPG. So monolith is an RPG making company. And they recently started releasing or ramping up to the release of the Conan the Barbarians one, which is pretty cool. They're also working on one for Berserk. So that's kind of interesting that they, they have like this lockdown on this type of fantasy, which is cool. Um, and uh, I think Jim and John C. Hawkins and Jeff Shanks and a bunch of other people play tested this during um, Howard days. So I know that, you know, it's, it's, it's getting to the point where it, it's about to be released or it has been released or it's on pre-order or something. I don't know. I'm not much of an RPG fan or tabletop RPG fan. So, um, I, I don't know too much about that, but I know that it's releasing, right? Um, and then in terms of stuff that they're going to release soon, um, there's more Savage Sword coming. There's only been three out of uh, the uh, assumed six that there would be. Uh, so we need three more of them to release by the end of the year at some point. Um, it's still unclear if the series is going to be an ongoing series or if it's only gonna be a one year release. I do think that it is going to be you know, turned into ongoing. I've seen people say that it's been relisted as ongoing instead of a limited series. And I know that Jim said that there was gonna be announcements about it at uh, San Diego Comic-Con, but I don't know that anyone exactly truly knows if it's ongoing or not yet. So that is something that we need to see. So hopefully we get some news about that. We have the Blackstone event coming soon. And so that is exciting. That starts in, um, the first issue that relates to it starts in Savage Sword of Conan number four, which releases at the end of August. And uh, the first uh, issue in the event actually comes out the next week, so September 4th, right? Assuming there's no issues with the printing and there, there's no delays, right? Um, and tying to that, I actually am planning on doing a reading challenge or event, I guess you could call it, leading up to the Blackstone uh, comic book, which will be um, this, this sort of idea where there's a bunch of different characters that show up uh, from all of Robert Howard's uh, library, essentially. And I wanted to read at least, uh, actually exactly, the first story that they appear in based in, in on public, uh, like based on how it was published, right? So um, Solomon Kane first appears in Red Shadows, Dark Agnes first appears in Sword Woman, uh, James Allison first appears in Marchers of Valhalla, and so on, right? So I wanna look at all of those stories Plus look at this other story called Fragment, uh, which is, uh, well, it's not called Fragment, but that's that's what the what it is, right? It is a fragment of a story that Robert E. Howard never finished, which is the basis for Jeff Shank's first foray into comic books, um, into comic book writing. Um, so I wanna read all of those, right? I also want to read the Blackstone uh, short story and, uh, you know, some other stuff, right? So I will do a proper announcement for that later, but I do want to mention that I am going to be doing this uh, Blackstone reading challenge or, or road to the Blackstone event reading challenge, I guess. Uh, so that'll be exciting. And then the next thing that's upcoming is that issue 13 is the start of the fourth arc of the story or the, fir the, the fourth uh, story in the, the series. And this one will be relating to the Frostshine's daughter, 
um, because it is the 90th anniversary of the release of that story this year, so they wanted to celebrate that, right? Um, so that's it for the upcoming stuff, right? So in terms of the story so far, in terms of what has been covered by Heroic Signatures as Conan, um, we, we have to understand a few things first before we really get into each arc, right? So Jim decided that he didn't want to rehash the stories of Robert E. Howard wrote, right? He doesn't want to redo that because Roy Thomas has done it, other people have done it, there really is no point in doing that. And there's also some pretty cool um, editions that Dalgard published in France that uh, Ablaze brought here to the US and you also, also can buy them uh, from Planeta Comic in Spain if you're interested. I would consider, uh, I would say that the best way to buy them is probably buy a European edition because the American one is downsized from its original album format and so you get uh, you get a lesser version if you buy the Ablaze one, right? But um, that's not really here or there. Jim didn't mention this at all, but um, it just kind of ties in with, to what he was saying, right? That, that, that there is these classic stories that have already been uh, created and recreated and reimagined and, and, and worked on a lot. And so Jim didn't really want to redo this, retract this path. So what he did instead is use those different stories as basis or as ways to put you in different locations in time for for Conan's storyline, right? So um, the Conan uh, comic book from Heroic Signatures actually weaves through and around and uh, beyond, uh, you know, over and under these classic stories from Robert E. Howard, right? So um, we follow Conan in these first three arcs through three different uh, stories, and one of them actually isn't even by Robert E. Howard. It's just kind of an established starting point for for Conan, which is the Battle of Venarium, uh, which I think is from a book by Harry Tur Turtledove, I think. Henry, maybe, I can't remember the name of the author, but they did this story, I think in like 2002. Um, it was released in like a book uh, by Bayan, I think at the time. And uh, this is uh, going over Conan of Venarium, right? So it's uh, basically, it details Conan um, like being abducted by these uh, Aquilonians and being like a slave for them and then eventually uh, him and his Sumerian brethren decide to overthrow their, their oppressors and Conan at the age of like 15 or something goes off after this battle and that's kind of where Conan's, you know, uh, history as a warrior, then a thief, then a pirate, then a king kind of starts, right? Uh, and so the first story arc actually places itself there. So it starts after the Battle of Venerium um, and then gets Conan to meet Brissa which is this Pictish character uh, who is descendant of Brule's line, right? And so this is kind of like a re reconnection of these two bloodlines, right? Because uh, Conan is descendant of Cole and Briz is descendant of Brule. So there's this, uh, this pillar of connection between the two that spans, uh, you know, through time and space, right? So that's cool. Um, and they realize that uh, there's this horrifying black stone that has... Uh, these powers that is turning these people into zombies and then they realize that this is being done by these serpent men and then this um, or I think they're lizard men right I can't remember exactly I think they're serpent men uh, because that they're they're tools of dooms um, underlings right and then uh, the battle ends uh, you know really interestingly with Conan and some of his Sumerian brethren managing to fight off these lizard men and escape but Brizza is lost and we don't know what happened to her at the end of arc one Arc 2 is set uh, right after the Queen of the Black Coast. Conan uh, is uh, melancholic and sad and uh, basically depressed because his first love or his true love, his major love uh, of his life has recently died. She sacrificed herself for him and he kind of just is numb to reality. He doesn't know anything. He doesn't care. But he has united with a, a team of thieves that he knew from before or somehow connected with at some point. Um, and they are tasked to do this um job and it turns out that this job is to steal this black stone which conan remembers from his youth uh, because at this point he's much older uh this is after he's been a pirate right so he was a thief first and then he was a pirate later and this is kind of the end of his pirating era uh sort of it seems like and um he realizes that he remembers this stone there is something that happens with it it takes over his mind it tries to battle him with spirits and then uh, Conan gets sent back in time uh, to Velusia, to the Thurian Age, 
and he gets to meet his ancestor, Cole, and uh, Brule, the ancestor of Riza. And then uh, this is actually set in such a way that um, you get to kind of interact with stuff from the Tower of the Elephant um, with Yog Kosha, but it, it's before that has happened. And this is where I have an issue with the way that has been handled because my understanding is Conan is a thief and then he's a pirate, right? So Yog Kosha's interaction when he kills Yog Kosha as a show of mercy to this ancient uh, alien, uh, it happens when he's still young, right? When he is a thief. And then he meets uh, Bellet later, right? He meets Bellet when he's much, uh, well, not much older, but he's definitely older. He's like in his 20s, maybe getting into his 30s when he meets Bellet, right? At least that's how it kind of reads. Um, and my understanding, or at least what I remember from, from these issues is that Conan sees Yakosha and he's like, I know you, but I don't know why. So this either implies that he doesn't have memory of killing Yakosha or that he like Yog Kosha's presence resonates with his soul, with his understanding of like his life, but he doesn't, he hasn't met Yog Kosha yet, right? And Yog Kosha more or less, uh, you know, agrees with this. And he's like, yeah, I know that our paths cross at some point. Um, I cannot really see you, but I know that you're there. Um, and so I don't like this because it means that the timeline is different from what I understand, right? Um, and I'm not sure that this is like an issue in terms of like them messing up, I think this is just the fact that Robert E. Howard's uh, writing isn't really chronologically set up pro correctly, right? He kind of just didn't care. It was just like, you know, I'm gonna tell these stories. There is some sort of internal chronology to them, but I, that doesn't really matter, right? And so this kind of allows a lot of interpretation, but I really do feel like Conan, uh, when he meets Yakosha, feels young and um, and kind of not really sure about himself that, that much yet. Whereas when Conan meets Bellet, he is properly, you know, a grown man, right? And so I think that there is an issue with the timing here. And, and they could easily fix this. And, you know, all you have to do is change a little bit of dialogue between Yakosha and Conan in like issue uh, 10, I think. Um, but that's kind of the only real issue I have with this story, right? But he meets Yakosha and then Cole and Brol and, and, and Conan, as, long, uh, well, as, as well as a lot of Red Slayers, go off to uh, Cole's birthplace. And they meet Tulsa Doom and they battle him and this kind of ends the story for now. Um, and so um, it's really awesome. I really, really like this story. I think it's been amazing. I think they've done a really great job with it, except for that caveat there I have about the the, the chronology of stories and the fact that I think that Conan should know who Yakosha is before um, uh, before he, he, he met Bellet. So the dialogue there didn't really work for me, but maybe I'm misunderstanding or misremembering. So if that's the case, let me know down below. And what you think about that also in general, let me know what 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 what, what the reality of the situation is uh, in the comments, right? So yeah, that's that's everything so far. That is the story so far. Uh, coming up is the Blackstone event with the crossover of, of, of Conan's uh, or Robert E. Howard's Many Heroes uh, and the 90th anniversary story celebrating the Frost Giant's daughter, right? So, um, the thing is, at this point, I'm not sure if the arc structure has uh, going to continue, right? Um, last year, I remember Jim saying that they knew for sure that Doug and uh, and and uh, Rob Del Torre were going to be doing the first four arcs, right? The first uh, 16 issues of the series, but it was kind of nebulous what was going to happen afterwards, right? Um, and the first three arcs, the first 12 issues, are you know one story over a long period of time, right? The next story is kind of individual, it's on, on its own. And so I think that maybe the best way to do this for now is to just kind of have every four issues be different, right? Or maybe do it so that there's less issues per arc and just kind of have a bunch of different artists going on. And then next time you wanna do a big event, have Rob Del Torre uh, do it, right? But now, I'm not really sure. I do think that I, I like Rob Del Torre the most. I think he's probably the best uh, uh, artist of the of all of the ones that I've seen see, do Conan. Um, and I would like to see him basically just stick to this book for the rest of time. But I know that that's not really good for him and it's also not uh, healthy. So um, I'm curious to see what they're going to do. I, I would like them to bring Benito Gallego to do some of the arcs, especially if he can work with Rob Del Torre because their art styles are a lot more similar to each other than, you know, uh, what we saw with uh, Doug and uh, and Rob Del Torre, which is actually another secondary issue I had with this, right? right? Which is, 
I like both of their art styles, you know, in a vacuum, but putting Doug right after Rob kind of feels like a disservice to Doug because Rob's artwork is like a classic retelling, a reimagining of, of, of what people think Conan should look like, right? And there's these four amazing issues. And then you kind of get this whiplash from getting this really different, very much more modern style to the artwork, right? And so to me, it made it really hard to, to, to really understand the fact that these are more or less the same story, right? It felt very separate, right? And, and then I think that was kind of the point, right? Like you can't read each of these arcs individually and it doesn't really make too much of a difference. Like you could, you could just read Doug Braithwaite's work and that's that. It doesn't really, you know, affect the other stories too much, but there is clearly an internal, you know, continuity between them. And so I would have liked to see that reflected in the artwork, right? So uh, those are my two issues with, um, with the story so far, right? With the, with the way that the comic has been handled. Now, in terms of what I want to see going forward, I think that there's quite a few things, uh, mostly in terms of artists, right? So we're gonna talk about the comic book first, right? So from the comic book, um, I want to see people like Belkis Evely and, and Benito Gallego and Walter Giovanni and maybe Enrico Marini, if they can manage to swing him to do something for them um, in, in you know either the main Conan uh, story or the Savage Sword. Um, and I want to see these you know, creators because I think they do a great job. I like their artwork. I think that whatever the style that they have is, whatever you want to call it, fits really well with um, this stuff. I, I think it fits really well with what Conan is about, right? And they have work experience with the sword and sorcery, um, you know, genre, right? So Bilkis Heavily is doing a series with Tom King right now called Helen of Windhorn. And that series is great. I, it looks amazing. And I really think that she would do great um, with stuff like uh, Cole's stories, right? So um, The Mirrors of Thus and Thune is a classic Cole story. And it has this really kind of trippy moment where Cole stares into a mirror and then sees different versions of his life, right? And I think that Belkis' Belkis's style fits that sort of story amazingly well. So I would like to see something like that, right? Something that involves this kind of like slightly trippy, almost kind of like dream-like state to one of our characters, you know, whether it's Cole or, or Conan or, you know, any of the other ones. I think Belkis Evely would do an amazing job and of course bring her uh, coloring team as well uh, with her. Uh, Benito Gallego, like I said, he has the most similar art style that I can think of to um, to to Rob Del Torre, and he did a pretty good job with the Tarzan license. He's been doing Tarzan comic strips for a long time, and he did a good job with the Lord of the Jungle series from last year, right? So uh, he'd be amazing. Uh, Walter Giovanni has been doing Red Sonia for a long time, and uh, I think he does it really well, and I would like to see his take on Conan. I think it'd look really, really nice. And Enrico Marini has this historical fiction uh, series called The Eagles of Rome, and uh, that looks really good. And I would like to see him, you know, kind of take on Conan as an Aquilonian general or, or king, right? I think that he, he would do pretty well with that. Uh, some other artists that I can think of off the top of my head that would also do pretty good here would be... Um, Thomas Grinberg, he did the first arc of the Tarzan uh, comic strip that I, I reviewed a few days ago. Um, the the guy that does Battle Chasers would do pretty good. Uh, I would like to see Dan Mora do, you know, at least a cover for Conan. I think that would look really, really nice, right? So that's it for people I want to see inside the, the comic book, uh, people that I want to see their art in, right? Or to see their art in the comic book. Um, but still keeping up with the comic book, I think that covers need to be much better. Um, I don't necessarily think I hate any of the covers uh, that they've done so far, but a lot of them feel like irrelevant. Like they don't have anything to do with what's inside the book. And they're also not really styles that I like, right? Um, at least that is the case for the main line. I think that they've done pretty well with uh, the Savage Sword of Conan, right? So um, I would like to see them do better with the covers. I think that there, there has to be a little bit um, less variation, there has to be less variant covers, and there has to be more um, pickiness and choosiness with who they choose for the covers, right? Um, I don't necessarily think they need to get like uh, David Nakayama or, you know, people like that or, you know, Inhyuk, Yu, Inhyuk Lee or anyone like that. They don't necessarily need that. I think they can stick to 
other other creators that have worked with uh, the Conan license before, I think they just have to be a bit more selective with their covers, make them much more appealing, and maybe make less variant covers. I think that there's like four every every month, and I don't think that that's necessary. Um, because I don't think that like the, the money spent justifies the money returned, right? Like I, I don't think they get enough return on investment on that, but you know, I, I guess they do if they keep doing it, right? So um, yeah, um, so that's it for that. In terms of characters I want to see, I really want to see Cole and, 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 um, and Dark Agnes or, you know, the original Sonia, Sonia Vrigatoni or Rigatori, um, and maybe a Brul story, right? Like just a story about Brule by himself, you know, maybe Cole sent him on an adventure and he has to do something for Cole. I think that would look really, really cool. I think that that'd be nice. I think that there is a lot of characters that um, need or, or can be fleshed out further than just the stories that Robert E. Howard wrote about them, right? And there's also stuff that Robert E. Howard wrote that doesn't really fit the sword and sorcery mold that could be really fun to see in the Savage Sword of Conan, right? Like maybe a Elmuric short story, right? Something that relates to his attempt at a sword and planet story, right? Or something to do with his... Uh, um, with his funny Western stories, right? Or something about El Borak. I think that there is a lot of characters that can be worked on here that would do really well. I mean, I think that there's a lot of, of greatness to this, right? And also maybe not be afraid to create new characters in the Hyborian age, right? You know, I would like to see some, you know, huge haired woman character like the original Red Sonia um, show up and, and, and be like this new cool character, right? I mean, I really like Brizza. I think that she would be great to to make a more mainstay of, of, of the Conan mythos, uh, at least for Heroic Signatures' run on it. Um, but I would like more of them. I think that'd be cool. Um, and so that's it for the comic books. In terms of, you know, other mixed media, I think that because Titan is pretty good at making real physical books, I think that the Del Rey collection should be printed by Titan instead of Del Rey. And actually, I think that a heroic signature, because I think they own everything except Red Sonia, should actually work with the Robert E. Howard Foundation to make the copies of their books, the ones that are basically part of the Del Rey collection, but that Del Rey ch chose not to publish, to make them actually fit and to make a proper Robert E. Howard library that collects everything he wrote, everything that relates to him, um, in a clear, you know, collection. And I think that Titan could really do this. I know that basically anything that isn't directly related to uh, the Hyborian Age or some of his more action-y, you know, swashbuckling stories are not that interesting to people. But I think that with the rise of, of uh, crowdfunding, I think that there is an easy way to make this collection happen and make it possible to 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 do it and i would really like to see that i would really like to have a full shelf of everything that robert e. howard wrote that's all in the same style in the same edition type published by titan and i don't see how this is that difficult to do um it would also help more people get you know those robert e. howard books because the Del Rey ones are really accessible they're all about 15 dollars, even though they're supposed to be priced at 20 but you know you can get them on amazon pretty cheap everything else is insanely expensive. If you try to buy a Robert E. Howard uh, Foundation book, uh, those, those are like $40 because they're small print runs, they're self-published and all of this. Um, and it really doesn't seem like it's a bang for your buck. Like there, there really is, like even though I'm a huge fan and I would like to have them, I really can't justify spending $40 on a book that is ex exactly the same and even maybe worse quality than one that I can get for $15, right? Like if, if Titan, did this, uh, or if, if Heroic Signatures got Titan to do this, I think it would make those books one more accessible and two more likely to actually re generate revenue, right? So that's what I would like to see. Um, so that's it for, for books, right? I would also like to see them collect their Savage Tales into physical volumes at some point, and I'm sure they will, just not right now, um, but eventually I would like that to happen. And then in terms of other stuff, I would like to see new movies or new shows. And when I see when, when I say shows, I actually think animation would be the right way to go. I think that a Conan adult animation 
you know, in, in, in the style of, uh, of Primal or maybe in the style of uh, Invincible uh, or um, what's the other one? The, um, the D&D one. Um, the one with Matt Mercer. I can't remember the name of it. Like the ones on Amazon Prime. Something like that would actually go a long way to making Conan much more relevant to the public. I think that that is kind of the one thing that they're missing here. There has been nothing that has made young people care about Conan, right? Like there's a few weirdos in my age range in their 20s that end up caring about Conan. That's either because their parents showed them the movies when they were kids or because for whatever reason they managed to enjoy um, sword and sorcery growing up and now they have finally found uh, the Conan comic book and stuff like that, or whatever the reason, I think that that is pretty small and, and pretty unlikely and, and broadly speaking, is going to make the the Conan franchise lose steam over time, right? And so there has to be something new, something easily accessible that brings it back. And I think that a Conan uh, anime, you know, just to make it easy to say, would probably be the best way to do that, right? Um, so I would like to see that. And then I mentioned this uh, in one of my Howard Days, uh, uh, in my Howard, Howard Days video. I think that there has to do, there has to be some international appeal to Conan. And I think that an interesting way to do that would be to create manga out of it, right? But this is pretty far-fetched, I think, because well, one manga is pretty different from 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 uh, from what's stuff that relates to Conan, right? There is really no true sword and sorcery manga everything is like fantasy but it, it it doesn't really go sword and sorcery right um for whatever reason it just doesn't seem to be that you know prevalent of a genre over there um there's a lot of dnd type uh series but that that's not exactly the same as sword and sorcery right so um that that's one issue the other issue is all of the great creators that people that that like both manga and Conan might want to see tackle Conan are not going to, right? Like, Kentaro Miura is dead, and he wrote Berserk, and his story is probably the most similar to Conan that we can get from Japan, but he, he would never be able to work on that because he has passed away, right? Um, so that that's out of the of the way, but maybe his uh, apprentices and the people that continue to, to work on Berserk might be able to, right? But... Why would they do that when they can just make it berserk, right? Um, in order to get a manga, you would have to give it to someone that's unknown or of a lesser, you know, pedigree than some of the great mangaka out there. And so it might actually end up being a flop or actually not good for the company to do this, right? But I would like to see more of a manga style to some of the Conan artwork at some point. Um, or alternatively, um, make a compact edition of some of the Conan stuff in like a smaller manga format, just because uh, that might appeal more. It seems to have worked for DC. They made those uh, compact editions. I can't remember what they're called. Um, and they seem pretty good. The pricing is great on them. So I think that there is some appeal to that, right? Um, and finally, the last thing I would like to see from, from Titan, uh, actually from Heroic Signatures, is actually this idea, right? So they're, they're redoing the omnibuses, they're continuing on from where Marvel left off, and I think that's amazing. But omnibuses of that sort, and uh, of that quality, assuming that Titan manages to make them as good or better than Marvel, uh, is that they're insanely huge, and they're insanely expensive. And they're not really that accessible. And also, basically, you get a print run of them, and then if everyone buys them immediately, who knows when you'll get another printing so you have to be first come first serve for that stuff right um but if they made smaller compendium types you know something like the epic collection or you know something different maybe something like the dark horse um elf quest books compendiums right i think that that would be really good it'd be really interesting to do because you could do it in a bunch of different ways you could do it you know chronologically and do the original marvel years and then you know the dark horse stuff and then this and then that you could do it by creator, you could do it uh, all sorts of ways, right? And so I think that a simplified, easier way to collect the books probably would be a good idea uh, for the comic books. Um, I would like to collect all of the Conan stuff that Roy Thomas, uh, Roy Thomas worked on that isn't in an omnibus format. I think it'd be better to read as a compendium, right? Something smaller and easier and more accessible for, for buying, right? Um, 
but maybe that's not a good move for them. I'm not really sure. So that's everything that I can think of for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you thought down below. What do you think about Conan so far? What do you think uh, has been good or bad from Heroic Signatures and from Titan? Let me know that in the comments. Thank you guys very much for watching the video and see you guys later.